uh, managed to get a hole in my wing uh, the other day so what I'm going to do is show you how I um, will repair the bladder uh, removing the bladder finding the hole and then repairing it and putting it back in again um, so relatively simple a couple of little things you're going to need which I'll take through now there you go so what you're going to need to do this is some string long enough to go from the center of the wing and about five or six feet out the end of the wing um, same both sides better if you have different colors so you know which size which a screwdriver to remove uh, some of the fittings a marker pen your patches your valve removal tool some impact adhesive some uh, paper towel scissors obviously and some mylar tape that's what you're going to need in order to do this and make it um, a better repair than just patching it so what i like to try and do first of all is actually physically pump it up because there's a good chance that you'll hear where the leak is in which case it's going to narrow it down for when you try and find the hole so pump it up um, and then we'll have a leak a listen test to see if we can find out roughly where the hole is full pressure shouldn't really need it and then what we're going to do is just have a listen to see if we or see if we can hear where the air is coming from so we tend to start at one of the wings and there you go straight away I've got a, a little nick there you might be able to hear the air escaping so it's a little nick, it's caught the bladder, it's also torn a little hole or a little nick in the actual thing itself. The rest of them are all scrapes. So that's going to have to be repaired and that's also going to have to be patched. So my hole is around this end here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to along the rest of it just to make sure I haven't got any others because there's nothing worse than repairing one, putting it all together, then it goes down again. So like I said, you can normally hear it. And there it is. Unfortunately, where I sail, I've got a lot of cockles and mussels. So I've got lots of these little tiny tears and nicks. And pretty much wherever I see a little score, that's where I'm going to check for leakage. So I can't hear any other leaks, so I'm gonna now let it down, get the air out, and then what I'm gonna do is then use uh, some soapy water just to confirm roughly where the hole is, but I know it's down that end, so that's, that's where I wanna go. So the next thing is let all the air out, try and squeeze it all out, and then we're gonna remove the bladder. Okay, so on the slick you've got the, um, the little tube that takes pressure from the main bladder into the strut bladder. You're going to need to undo this to get it out. So um, you use a flat-headed screwdriver to pop this off, but be careful because they can be stiff. And obviously when you force it, the next thing you're going to do is into your finger, hence the last time, blood all over the wing. So pop that off. Does is actually clamps you can actually see that clamps the bladder um, the tube on so you're gonna have to pull that off and the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna push that in inside the wing and that's now through now this one on the duotones you use 
this little ring. So to get the valve out of this one, you have a retaining ring, which you use this device to unlock it. And then you can undo it with your fingers, completely take it off. And there you go. And basically when you put it back in, you have these little keys to make sure it's in the right place. Put it back on, just the opposite, finger tight. And then once it's finger tight, use the red ring, tighten it back up again. There you go. That's how you get the valve out of the dual tones. And what that now does is means that you've got that will pop out. Okay. So basically, that's what you need to do to prepare the bladder to come out. So the next thing you need to do is prepare it for when you put it back in. And that's where your string comes in. Okay, so what you do is you come down to the end of your uh, your wing and you will find usually there's a little square which has got Velcro on the other side. Put your fingers in, detach the Velcro and pull out this little tube. And what you'll find is inside the tube will be your bladder. And as you can see on this one, the bladder goes through that piece of material, comes out the other side. It's very important to note that and remember it for when you put it back in, okay? So what you're going to do is you're going to take your line, you're going to make a lark's head knot. So Lark's head is just a little loop like so. Pop it over the doubled up part of the bladder, secure it, and you're ready to go. So go around to the other side and do the same on the other side. Okay, and that's what you want to do. You're ready now to pull your bladder out of the wing. The good thing is, is because we already checked, we know that our hole is somewhere here. So we haven't got to go all over the wing. Uh, the bladder to try and find the hole but obviously i'm going to check the hole lot anyway but that's where we're looking at exactly the same on the other side so that is now ready to pull through so basically what we've done is we've removed that valve we've removed this valve and the bladder is now completely free with inside its actual um, inside the wing itself so what we're going to do now is going to pull the bladder out through here okay so what you want to do is get your valve out and then you basically want to start pulling the bladder through and as you can see it starts to gather up so what you want to do is hold on to it and pull the bladder and then what you want to do is come to a corner and then put your hand on one end of it and literally just pull the bladder through once that's gone in you'll find that, that should now start to come through a little bit easier and as you can see that comes out nice and easy and there's your string so that means now you're able to pull this back when you need to okay so detach it and then what I suggest you do is pull quite a lot through and leave it to one side because what you don't want to do is have it pull through so your bladder is out now what I could do is I could just take the chance and repair that hole here because I know roughly where it is in fact that is it right there you can actually see it right there now I could repair this hole and put it back in and that's going to save me a lot of problems but what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the whole lot out to show you how to check the entire so if you can't find it you need to go and find it so I'm going to show you how to do that so that's the first bit out and then what you want to do is start pulling the other end as well pull your valves out like you say it gets caught so hold on to this, pull your wing along, and then get a bit of gather, hold on to it, and then just pull the end, and you may need to just feed it in slightly. And once that goes through, you'll find that will come out quite nicely. And then once again, you end up with your string, pull quite a lot of the string through, remove it and throw it away. So that's that for the moment, and there is our bladder. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pump it up, not massively, just pump it up a bit. But what I do need to do is I need to obviously cap that off. So in order for you to be able to block this off, unfortunately you've got to pull this one off as well. So being careful with your fingers, you want to pop this one off. Push that one. 
one on and what you need to do is clamp it off so turn it over on itself and clamp it otherwise when you're pumping all the air will come out so what it does now as well is it helps if you can lay it out flat as well obviously it's a bit windy now so that's going to be a bit of a problem but you don't really want too many twists in it because the twist can put a lot of pressure on the bladder so start getting it pumped up and then we just go along and do the hearing test again but what we also then do is a soapy water test see here these are the ones I've previously done so they've held quite well and you don't want to go too mad on this because obviously there's nothing to support this now so you could put too much air in and end up bursting your bladder so You've just got to be quite careful with it. So detach it. And you can do the hearing test again, which obviously if it's a nice still day and it's nice and quiet, won't be a problem. But what I am going to do now is just do the soapy water test as well. So what I've got here is just a little bit of water with, but with a lot of dish soap in it, because I want to be able to make bubbles. So start at one end and put plenty of uh, fluid on, plenty of uh, dish soap and what you're looking for is bubbles obviously this one pretty obvious you can see straight away so what you're looking for is basically bubbles and noise what you can normally do is hear it you can hear it there this one's quite a big one so it's quite easy to see but what you might have to do is you're looking for big sort of clear bubbles and if you put plenty of dish soap on what you'll start to get is for the smaller ones you'll actually start to get big bubbles and you'll notice them straight away so that one you can see is pretty obvious that's a proper like razor uh, like a muscle cut so what you want to do is dry that area and then using a marker pen mark it and what you're doing is listening as well as looking because you'll normally hear it as you go over the top so you see a bubble like that go over that area again it might just be where I've put so that's all right and just go along the entire length and just be methodical with it like I said you'll normally hear it and what I am going to do is I'm going to check the ones that I've done before just to make sure those aren't leaking as well as I've got the bladder out maybe that I'll find other ones that I've not seen before the one that went down the other day it went down pretty quickly and it was pretty obvious what I'd done because I actually I caught it on the muscle beds and it went down straight away but the one I had before was quite literally where some sand had got inside the bladder and it had worn just worn a small hole so you see I've got some bubbles here so I just want to make sure they're not what I've made and they're not leaking out. Yeah, they're fine. One of the things that can happen is every time you pump your wing up, you sometimes allow a little bit of sand to get in and that sand will make its way all the way down to the end and you'll see that it actually gets to the end of the wing and that will start to wear out the end of your wing. So sometimes it's worth, you know, just to shake it away so it doesn't collect in the backs. So the sand that is inside is not actually inside, it's actually in this little flap here. So again, that can wear through the wing. So you just, something, if you've got the bladder out, you might as well do a little bit of preemptive maintenance on it so that's one side so what we're going to do now is turn it over and do the other side 
Now this is quite soft now, so I'm going to put a bit more air in it because I want to be able to hear it and see it. Obviously, it's quite a big hole down that end, so it's let quite a lot of it's let quite a lot of the air out already. So I'm just going to double check those repairs I've already done before. They're fine. And like I say, I probably didn't need to do this because I know where the hole is, but I might as well do it whilst I've got the bladder out. So that, once again, right at the ends, all the areas where they get a lot of wear. And then have a look in the corner, see if there's any sand that's got in there. You can see there is sand there, but that's mainly got in through here. So I'm going to give that a little wash out. Because the sand over time will just wear and eventually it will make a hole. Um, and this is a, this is a pain. You've got a very very slow leak it's uh, you might have the the most epic session and 20 minutes in your wings starting to go down and you've got to go back in and that's it that's you done so for the sake of looking after these every now and again it's it's worth it and now what we want to do is wash all the suds off and also we want to dry it Okay, so we're going to get this really dry. It's got absolutely no water near it at all. You can see it's quite a big hole there actually. So we want to make sure it's perfectly dry. I'll give it a little sand just around the edges. These also because we've used the dish soap as well, there shouldn't be any grease on it, should all be really easy to stick. So, what we're going to do now is get our patch. Not happy with that one, it doesn't seem to be very sticky, so we'll use another one. And there's nothing to stop you doing multiple patches in an area. So you can see I've managed to put the hole slightly towards one end. So I'm just going to put another patch over the corner just to sort of give it a little bit more strength. And that will do. Obviously what happens is, is when the, the bladder is pushing against the, um, the actual material of the wing, that is pushing that and sealing it anyway. Um, but that's, that's pretty good. So, all good. So that's the hole done. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try and see if I can make a bit of a repair on the actual wing material because what the next thing will happen is, is that if that spreads, I'll be pumping the wing up one day and it will just explode. And that's a major thing that you can't then repair at home. You have to get someone to actually repair it, which means you, your wing goes away and you can't go winging. So um, it's better to try and see if you can do it now. So the way that I try and do it is obviously I'm going to put a patch on the outside of it, but I use a bit of contact adhesive, but I'm also going to try and see if I can get a patch on the other side as well so that it will actually stick and it will help it. So I'm going to have to reach all the way down inside the wing and try and get that in. So I'll, I'll, I'll get on with that now. That's where your mylar tape comes in and you stick it on the inside. Um, and then obviously on the outside, I'll put a bit of um, contact adhesive just to make sure that this glues together. So you can see I've got a couple of quite big um, scuffs here and this one has definitely gone through. So I'm not going to chance that because obviously if I pump it up one day that's going to spread in which case that will rip. Bladder will blow and then it's a new bladder and it's also a repair. So I'm going to try and see if I can counteract that now by putting a patch on the outside but also a patch on the inside. The one on the outside I'm actually going to use contact adhesive to try and 
give that a little bit more strength and I'm going to do that one as well. So this is where your mylar tape comes in. Um, I got this off of um, e eBay, um, it, was, it wasn't expensive. Um, basically it's the same ripstop material as this, uh, as you can see and uh, you just basically cut it. It's quite sticky in itself, but it's not sticky enough, I think, to put up with multiple um, emergency water, but also um, with the constant inflating and deflating it stretches. So I said, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my marker. Yes, I know it's black on black, but I'll be able to see it. And then what I'm gonna do is a bit of contact adhesive. And get it really, get it into the fibers of the fabric, really push it in. It's not gonna be particularly pretty, but it will, it will do the job. And the idea is if you do it when the bladder's not in, you don't want any of this glue um, getting into the bladder and sticking the bladder to the, the actual outside of the, the wing itself. So you want this to tack off and then dry. And then once that's totally dry, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put another piece inside so there's no chance of any of the contact adhesive um, getting onto the bladder. The reason they use contact adhesive is because it's quite flexible. Um, if you use something that was a bit more like, like super glue or something like that, that goes really, really hard. And what can happen is, is it can actually become so hard it will pierce your bladder. So you want something that's quite, um, you know, that, that is quite uh, flexible. And I'm going to put a little bit more, because what I don't want is that split to propagate to go any bigger. So what this is doing is it's just taking the strain away from there and putting it onto here again. So this stuff is actually pretty sticky, so it should just stick straight to the contact adhesive. And it's just giving it a little bit more to stick to. But what I've been trying to do is get that into, actually sort of into the fabric type of thing. So it's actually almost... Okay, so what I've done is I've put the contact adhesive on. I've got it really, I've tried to push it into the actual fibers itself. That's now gone tacky. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my outer patch on and um, let that dry. Like I said, it's more most important that you let this dry off before you put your bladder in, because what you don't want is your bladder sticking to this, um, because obviously if it does that, it will tear. So the hardest thing about this is getting this to come away. Great. Super sticky stuff. So. And that's basically sticky mylar with impact adhesive as well, so that shouldn't come off. But we're not done yet because what we need to do is do similar on the inside unfortunately we can't use contact adhesive so we cut a piece of this and we've got to try and see if we can get it all the way inside and stick it roughly in the same place if it, as long as it's nearby because what we don't want is any of that glue to stick to the bladder um, and what we want to try and do is give it a little bit more to push against so it doesn't tear i'm also going to do this one as well um, and i'll come back to that one in a minute Okay, so I've put the patches on um, because of how far down it is, I just can't seem to get another piece on the inside. So I'm just going to have to rely on these two patches. So, I mean, they're better than they were before. Um, but personally, if it was further up, I always try and get a little bit on the inside as well. I can't get in from here. Um, probably what I should do is just go and get a wife who's got quite small hands, probably get them in there. But no, so that's as good as it's going to get. So that has really sealed it up. And that's just going to transfer the stress from the tear into around it so that should actually last now obviously if it goes again it's going to be pretty pretty major in which case it'll have to be a proper repair um, but that's those two patches done okay so now what it is is put the bladder back in 
So a quick update. So this is after two sessions um, and you can see the repairs are holding up quite nicely. So the, um, the glue has held it on nicely and you can see there's no lifting. So that's actually worked really well. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is put the bladder back in. So we need to take the little pipe off and we need to prepare it um, to go in. So we know that this is that end and that way round because of that and that. And what we want to do is try and prepare this to go in as easy as possible. So what we want to do is get it all nice and flat along its seams. And then along its seams fold it so that you can lift it and as it pays out it will come out flat and it's very important that you don't have any twists in it at all um, and if you do it carefully at this stage there's a lot less chance of you getting any twists so the idea is now is we're going to place that like that and then what we'll do is we'll place that ready to go in so we know that this one is for that way and we're going to lark's head knot again we're going to feed that in and we're going to pull the other end and it becomes quite tricky to feed this in so what I then do is I attach that to uh, something on the ground and then what I do is I pull this away and which means I can pull this away feed this in and it should feed through I'll show you what I mean in a second so we're going to pull the excess string in See, that's feeding in quite nice and flat but then what I do is I will attach this to something immovable and then what you do is you pull the wing away and what that should do is allow you to feed it in nice and flat as you pull the wing away now what you can do is shaking it because you don't want twist forming and then what I'm going to do is shorten that again So you can see I've got quite a lot of the wing but what I have got is this is nowhere near so what I need to do is pull, let's hold on to that and actually pull some of this back in so what's happened is, is I've concertinaed this up and then I've pulled the bladder through handful of the bladder and then pull you can see that that's now looking about right and we're not going to tie this off just yet we're going to just get this the other end in first 
and now what we do is exactly the same thing the other way so on the seams fold it By doing it on the seams, you know that you don't have any twists in it. Well, now we retrieve the other end. We make our lark's head. And now we start to feed it in. So pull the excess through. It's probably where it's better to have two people to do this, but you can't always have two people. almost there now so what we've got to do so we've now got to get this bit in which has got all of your valves so this is where you want to be quite careful and you want to feed it in so get the first valve in and then go back to pulling it through. <laughs> so now what you want to do is reach in, get your valve, and actually place it in position. So what we want to do now is put this last little bit in, get that into position, feed the rest of the bladder in and then it's a case of secure everything and then we want to try and shake it all out and start gently pumping it up and moving the bladder back in. So on this one you can see that there is actually like a little key goes in, locks into position and then we put our ring back on. And that's in so what we've got to do now is get the bladder nicely centralized inside the wing so best way of doing that is to quite literally start at the center and shake it and then just shake it out particular wings is, is as it comes around the corner this is where you can end up with a twist so um, not too much you can do about that to start with what you'll do is when you pump it up you'll see it then you have to let it down get your hand inside and physically twist it um, but once the bladder's in what we can now do making sure that we've got 
the bladder comes through this material. And what we're going to do is we're going to leave this out because what we're hoping is if there's any twist it will pop out. So we're going to leave that out for the moment. Same with this one. Leave that out so hopefully, but what you can see is I haven't got that through in the material. So what I need to do is make sure that goes through there. Skeeter. Right, so what we're going to do now is give it a pump up, but before we do that, we've got to rejoin, otherwise all your air leaks out. Now the trouble with these little connectors is, is they wear, so if you do this a few times, they actually don't go back on properly. It's not a major problem, because what you can do is you can use cable ties. So pop your pipe back on. see the way they go because of the way that the little things line up with the indents that you've had before so pop it on and sometimes you'll need a pair of pliers to um, click these on there you go that one's gone on that one's gone on quite well actually so and then the next one if um, these don't go on very well, uh, what you can do is put these in hot water and it softens them up and they go on a little bit better. So once again, line it up, click on, there you go, that's clicked on quite nicely, so they're ready to go. So now what we're going to do is give it a slight inflation and try and shake out some of the twists. it up I've got a little little crease there that's not too bad but there's no real twists or anything like that I've got a little one just here which I'm going to shake out in a minute but what you can see is down here I've got a quite a big sort of twist here so what I'm going to do is let it down again and then I'm going to reach down try and feel where the twist has gone it's either that way or that way it's 50 50 twist it out and then pump it back up again so you can see after a bit of some um, moving around, sort of half deflate it, move it around, deflate it, half deflate it, keep moving everything around, eventually I've got rid of the, the twist. So that's looking really nice. So I've also discovered another scuff, so I'm going to repair that one as well uh, after this. But there you go, that's the wing done. And from start to finish uh, was about an hour and 10 minutes. So um, yeah, well worth doing it for the peace of mind, but I'm going to be able to go out and do it. So what I'm going to do is going to pump it up quite solid and then I'm just going to do just see if there's any Nope, nothing seen. That's all good. So another little one there that needs to be repaired. So I'll do that once that's gone down. That's a bit drier now as well. There you go. 